Thank you very much, Bill Fleming. You're looking at Muhammad Ali coming down the aisle en route to the ring. Muhammad Ali in his first live appearance on ABC's Wide World of Sports since he did away with the German call Mildenberger back in September of 1966. Ali at 221, fighting the sixth-ranked heavyweight Kenny Norton at 210. You haven't heard much about Norton, and this is supposed to be a routine exercise for Ali. In perfect truth, most of the publicity before the fight has been about Kenny Norton's hypnotist, whom Norton says, as you have seen in our interview with Kenny, has reduced him from being overconfident to merely confident. Now Ali is in ring center, dancing around in that robe that Elvis Presley gave him in Las Vegas some six weeks ago prior to his fight against the British heavyweight Joe Buck. Ali who it seems to me has taken Kenny Norton more lightly in the pre-fight build-up here than any opponent I have known him to fight. And yet, he claims privately other ones. Ali is wearing 10-ounce gloves as Norton will be. That's the way it is in California, and 10-ounce gloves are a worry and because afternoon. they can really punish a man. Here's the ring announcer. A promotion of Sports Promotions Incorporated, Lee Pruitt promoter, 12 rounds, heavyweights, introducing in the white corner a former Marine, the number one, make that the number seven contender in the world from San Diego, California, with a record of 31, 1, and 24 KOs, weighing in at 210 pounds, here is Kenny Norton. Kenny Norton. Kenny Norton, the young man who's been seasoned by sparring with Joe Frazier. Indeed, he's been a sparring in partner of Joe's been down in corner. Kingston, Jamaica. So he's got a sense with of where Trunks, it's at. The former world heavyweight champion. His record 41-1 with 31 KOs. Weighing in at 221 pounds, the people's choice, Muhammad Ali. Ali. Muhammad Ali, about whom so much has been said and so much written, scheduled 12-rounder. And with me from time to time at ringside will be the former heavyweight champion of the world, the only man to have defeated Ali, Joe Frazier. He'll be on my right, and to my left will be Joe's manager, Yancey Durham, so we'll be calling them in. Now the final instructions from the referee, who is Frank Rustich, a veteran referee here around San Diego. The judges are Hal Rickards and Fred Hayes. There are two doctors attending at ringside, Dr. William Lundeen, Dr. Peter Jones. And as the fight is about to get underway, we'll, developing the score, we'll develop the scoring system for you here in California. It's not easy, believe me. They call it simple, and it's so complex it warrants a long explanation. The bell for round one. Norton in the early going should show a pretty good left jab. His best punch is a left hook. He chops with his right. It's not really effective. As fights go on, he has a tendency to open his stance and leave himself open to the left, very vulnerable to it, and to the counter right. But maybe those fastballs have been to some degree corrected. We'll see. Ali in the white trunks, Kenny Norton in the blue. Ali with the flicking left to keep Norton off. Norton's best hope is the left hook to the belly, and he's got to get inside to connect with him. crowd yell virtually every time Kenny Norton throws a punch. San Diego's his hometown. He's an ex-Marine, a past champion in the Pan Am Games. A determined guy. 28 years old, though. Not as young as you might think.
We've got a minute to go in round one. You saw that left attemptedly thrown by Norton. It came from way out. He telegraphed it. We have the mandatory eight count in this fight. The three knockdown rule is waived. No scoring, no saving by the bell. Half a minute to go. The crowd excited as Ali was pinned in the corner. But you saw him blocking those punches. With his arms and with his gloves. We're approaching the end of round one. This giant oil thermometer shows how much heat today's power equipment, emission controls, and turnpike speeds build up in your engine. Enough heat to rob your motor oil of its full power to protect your engine. For your peace of mind, Quaker State urges you to change your oil as soon as your owner's manual says to. And be sure to use only a premium oil fortified to handle today's heat. For your peace of mind, specify Quaker State. America wakes up with Skin Bracer. Eggs. I needed that. If you need waking up, Slap on some bracer. Its skin tightener and chin chillers can help you come out smoking. Thanks. I needed that. Round two coming up. Ollie in the white, Norton in the blue. First round did not have a lot of action, but the points would have to go, it seemed to... Nancy Durham sitting next to me, Frazier's manager, and me to Ali. Now about the scoring. Very quick. The winner of a round gets anywhere from one to five points. The loser of a round gets anywhere from none to four points. No points for either fighter if the round is even. The man with the total point, highest total points wins the fight. Good left there by Norton. That excited the crowd. So that it's possible for a man to win more rounds than the other man and still lose the fight. That's what happened once to Floyd Patterson here in California when he fought Jerry Quarry. One other thing about California, Norton trying to make good use of that left and succeeding. And this the second round. One minute gone in it. Left is getting into Ali. Truth is, Ali looks sluggish up to this point. You have to wonder, Yancey, we saw Ali last night at a party, actually. He wasn't doing anything, just sitting there. You have to wonder if he's taking Norton too lightly. That is true. I don't think he's going to take him too lightly. I mean, just a matter of uh, he gets to Norton there. Uh, Clay is doing a wonderful job. He's a smart fighter, and he got a stand-up fighter, and I don't think any stand-up fighter can whip him. Well, that's pretty bluntly spoken. The right got into Ali and then a left. And Norton is coming after him. If nothing else, Norton's confidence is growing. A left to the stomach. Angie Dundee has bluntly said that Norton does a lot of things right for Ali. Come on, At the end of this round, by the way, for our stations around the country, if we get a chance, we're going to give them an opportunity to identify themselves. Half a minute to go in the second round. Not a bad round for Kenny Norton. Well, 
Well, we're approaching the end of round two. We'll return with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports right after this message from our local stations. Back in the San Diego Sports Arena, the start of round three. I gave Kenny Norton the better of it in the second round. Only in the white trunks is back to you. The two standing in ring center. There hasn't been much movement by Ali in this fight. He appears sluggish. But inside of his right glove, he had marked down KO in three. So that while he didn't announce it or didn't predict, this was the round he apparently wanted to knock Ken Norton out of. Norton's stance gets more and more open as the fight progresses, and he's vulnerable to the right. Now you see Ali, for the first time, beginning to dance. Up on the toes, circling to the left, flicking the left. Now the public is beginning to see the first touch of Muhammad Ali. We're just past the minute mark in round three. Getting a vision of the dancer here with the left flicking in. This is the way Ali usually likes to handle his opponents. This is vintage Ali. Once again, let's go to Yancey Durham. What do you make of it, Yance? Well, he's beginning to bounce. He's on both on his toes and uh, getting his bottom right behind him all the time there. If Kid would check him a little bit there, he would do much better, but he's falling around. He's going to get hit. Yancey Durham, Joe Frazier's manager. They're going to bring Joe in the next round because with only 45 seconds left, it looks like what Ali wrote in the inside of his glove isn't going to hold. There was a time when he could make predictions and make them stick. But that was a lot of years ago, and Ali is now 30, close to 31. his right foot, often appearing to be off balance. I want to talk next round to Joe Frazier about that, who sparred with him so often. We're approaching the end now of round three. Round four coming up. Kenny Norton of San Diego has the crowd, of course, very much with him. Ali started sluggishly, won the first as I saw it, lost the second round as I saw it, and then started to fight in the Ali way as you see him now doing. On the toes, circling steadily to the left, keeping the opponent on the move, using the full ring. Norton said he wanted to cut the ring in half on Ali. He didn't even have to do it in the first two rounds because Ali showed no movement. Now take a look at that right leg, will you, of Kenny Norton. See the way it lags back? What do you make of that, Joe? You sparred with well, the guy. I would say, uh, otherwise, this is the way Kenny moves to get his power. Otherwise, a lot of guys move different kind of ways to get their power. And I think this Bobby Kinsway are moving. 
That, of course, was Joe Frazier, the former heavyweight champion of the world and the only man ever to have beaten Muhammad Ali. Now you see Norton with Ali in the corner, and Ali is just blocking the blows, the blows with his gloves and arms. But, of course, the action encourages the fans here in the San Diego Sports Arena. Angie, what's going on with Muhammad? I don't see any movement, any he's punching. Start, he's starting to wear this guy out. Don't worry about it. There's a lot of direction to what he's doing. He knows what it's all about, Howard. Angie Dundee, the trainer of Muhammad Ali, sitting just over past Joe Frazier. Come on, We're coming to you live from the San Diego Sports Arena on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Muhammad Ali against Kenny Norton. Fourth round. A little more than a minute to go. an almost startlingly dull Ali. Apart from the third round where he had steady movement, he's been doing very little. Angie Dundee says he's wearing Norton down. One wouldn't think that with his experience, 41 victories, one defeat, he'd have to wear down a man who's never really fought a class opponent. Although Kenny Norton does have 30 victories against only one defeat. Well, I guess the crowd now senses that Ali is doing nothing, while Norton presumably may be punching himself out, so the crowd is beginning to boo. Ten seconds left in round four. We're back live at the San Diego Sports Arena. The bell for the start of round five. Ali in the white, Norton in the blue. So far, a team fight, a sluggish fight. Little, if any, movement by Ali. Why? It's hard to figure. Has he gone back that far? That's not easily believable. But certainly, Kenny Norton's confidence is building up. This unknown, unheralded youngster who really didn't seem to belong in the same ring with Ali. One wonders when Ali is going to begin to move. Oh, there may have been one other time I've seen him fight this way. That was in that rematch at Madison Square Garden against Floyd Patterson, where Ali did virtually nothing for five rounds and then sprung into action and quickly ended the process. Whether or not he can do that against a young kid with the body of Norton, I don't know. This fight, a reminder, tomorrow on ABC, a sports triple header beginning at 2 p.m. Eastern time. The NBA basketball playoffs, the Knicks against the Bullets. Then my magazine show, this time with a bartender in the island of Mallorca to celebrate the opening of the baseball season because the bartender's name is Kurt Flood, the former all-star center fielder of the National League. And then finally, live, the Atlanta 500 stock car race, which should... Uh, will not be seen in Atlanta and the surrounding areas. That's a triple header on ABC Sports tomorrow over most of these stations. We are coming up to the two-minute mark. One minute left in round five. And you can figure this out for yourself. This has been nothing like Muhammad Ali. Except for the third round with some dancing and some movement. He has been substantially in ring center, not his bag at all. This is a scheduled 12 rounder. Left got into North Man, but he wasn't hurt. Some thought he had been, but he was Here's Ali directly above us in the corner as the clock runs down for round five. 
the living room. Well, it's the start of round six. And as one looks back on the first five rounds, either Kenny Norton is a smart, smarter, much better fighter than anybody thought, or Muhammad Ali has gone back a lot more than one could have reasonably believed. What do you think, Joe Frazier? Well, uh, I think right now, uh, Ken a very uh, smart fighter. He's good. He's been with me for like five years, and uh, I think he's, he know the ropes. As uh, a lot of people think it, he know the ropes out there. He know what he's doing. back in the corner right above it well we're a minute into the sixth round and this is getting interesting if Ali can do something more than he's done going to have to do it, start doing it. We're almost a minute and a half into the sixth round. What is wrong with your fighter? Tell me now. Tell me after this little bit right here, Humphrey. All right, we'll see what happens in this little bit right here. That was Angelo Dundee. As a reporter, I can only say Ollie's arms seem heavy and listless. No snap to the punches. And where is that old movement on the toe? Circling, circling, circling. 40 seconds left in round six. Keep that up, baby. 25 seconds left. Not what you would call a scintillating effort, is it? Ten seconds left in round six. The bells for round seven. We're coming to you live from the San Diego Sports Arena. Ali in the white against Kenny Norton in the blue. And for those of you just joining us, it's been a curious affair been virtually no movement by Ali only in the third round when he moved on his toes as he is suggesting he may do right now he has not been fighting the kind of fight we have seen him fight so many times in the past and now that we're as far along as the seventh round against so unheralded a fighter as Kenny Norton well you have to begin to wonder been about the heavyweight triangle and nobody's paid any attention to Norton. Dick Sadler's been in town this week, reportedly met with Herbert Muhammad, Ali's manager. As you know, Yancey Durham and Joe Frazier are both here with me at ringside. But the way this thing is moving along, we may not be hearing so much about an Ali for me. Minute and a half left in round seven. Still no real action by Ali. Now here in California, one doesn't even conjecture with the scoring. At least that's been my experience. Remember, the winner of a round gets anywhere from one to five points. The loser gets anywhere from none to four. 
You just can't tell how the referee and the two judges are scoring. The referee is Frank Rustage. The judges are Hal Rickards and Fred Hayes, all veteran boxing men. But you can win a fight on rounds and still lose the fight in California on the total point system because of the system of scoring. Incidentally, you can also lose a fight on a foul in this case, which is a reminder of Pink and Phil Scott days in the Jack Shockey era. In another team episode, round seven is moving sluggishly toward its end. Half a minute left. And if possible, we're going to give our stations around the country again the opportunity to identify themselves. Round is about to end, and just a moment, we'll take back with more of Wide World of Sports right after this message from our local station. All right, we're back for round eight. And Ali just hasn't been right. And I think he may have cracked a tooth in his mouth, judging by the way he's holding his mouth. Not with his hands, of course, but the mere structure of the mouth. Norton is growing in confidence. Let's see if we can get Dr. Ferdy Pacheco to tell us. Ferdy, is there anything wrong with Muhammad's mouth? No, I think uh, he's loosened the tooth, but there's no fracture. There's no broken anything. There's nothing, you know. Well, what do you think is wrong with him? Ferdy, what do you think is wrong with the fighter? There's not much wrong with him right now. He's fighting pretty good, Howard. Well, that, of course, is from a corner where the good Dr. Pacheco naturally identifies with Muhammad Ali. There's a little movement. There's some movement. Still no punching, and especially in the right hand, no snap at all. There's the flicking left. This is round eight. We've gone a minute and 10 seconds into round eight. And Joe Frazier, I think that Ali has been trying. I just don't think it's there. I think he's been trying to uh, take Ken out. Like I say, I worked with Ken for five years, and he know the ropes. He's a very good fighter. He know what he's doing out there. You're not taking any chances. You're not giving no more than you can take. Okay, Joe Frazier again. He probably knows more about Ken Norton than anybody else around because of those five years of sparring with him. Minute and 45 into round eight. We are coming to you live. ABC's Wide World of Sports from the San Diego Sports Arena. Last time Ali appeared on Wide World Live was September of 66 against the South Park from Germany, Carl Mildenberger. That went via the satellite. And Ali didn't fight well that night. He was puzzled by the South Park stance, but nothing like this. Two and a half minutes now gone in round eight. This thing could be a silent movie. All right. 
See the countdown. Back live in the San Diego Sports Arena. The bell for round nine. Only four rounds left in Ali. While it's possible he's ahead on the scorecard, and probably is, you never know in California, though, and especially in a lad's hometown, he has been not very much today. Note that they're in ring center. Remember the pre-fight interview with Norton? He said he wanted to cut the ring in half. He hasn't even had to do it by his own precepts because Ali hasn't moved. As a matter of fact, for much of the fight, Norton has controlled Ali but hasn't taken advantage of it because his left is too slow in its delivery and comes from too far away. It's a little bit of what we saw from Ali against Joe Frazier taking a rest against the ropes and that cost Ali in the Frazier fight. You remember the 11th round when Joe tagged Ali with a rugged left hook and Ali wobbled all over the ring. My opinion, that was the turning point of that fight in Frazier's favor. Missing, low, slow, no snap. Well, the crowd overrated that blow. Didn't really connect. Ali slipped it. One wonders if after this exhibition, Ali will still be proclaiming George Foreman an amateur. Less than a half a minute to go in round nine. Kenny Norton, not only lasting, but who can tell about the scoring? Well, we're coming to you live from the San Diego Sports Arena. Round 10, believe it or not, round 10 is underway. Kenny Norton in the blue trunks against Muhammad Ali in the white. In a fight that has been anything in the world but exciting. Interesting only in the fact that Ali has shown so little against this relatively unknown heavyweight whose chief claim to fame previously, apart from the San Diego area, had been the fact that he was a sparring partner for the former heavyweight champion, Joe Frazier. He's been the aggressor in the fight, even though he hasn't really known how to take advantage of it. And Ali has been, well, we've been watching. Come on, Cal. Gloves up against the ropes. Ali showing no movement. And looking tired as Norton lifted him up a little bit off the ground. Things grow curiouser and curious. Round 10. Minute and a half gone. Ali hasn't 
gotten that left in this afternoon the way he usually does. It wasn't Terrible a quick left snapping left. thing. Come on, T.T. Come up on that left. Crowd now beginning to exhort Kenny Norton. Well, he couldn't take advantage of the off-balance door. Norton appears so much younger. So much stronger. There's that right to the midsection. And Joe Frazier is exhorting all, uh, Norton to keep those blows into the midsection, which is now becoming a more open target. left is getting in there before our leads. We are in round 10 with 10 seconds to go. As you see the countdown on your screen. This week, but time doesn't permit it today. Now you're looking at Ken Norton, a confident Ken Norton, getting instructions from Eddie Futch, the shrewd trainer. They come out for round 11. And Ali, who has done virtually nothing all afternoon. But Kenny Norton, who hasn't been a good enough fighter to take advantage of the control he's had over Ali, really. But still a fighter who's grown in confidence. And in the last round, the 10th round, began to land to the belly effectively. And even was getting the left jab in there much more quickly than he had earlier. Half a minute gone in round 11. less than a minute and a half in round 11. Believe it or not, round 11. Whom do you have ahead at this point, Nancy Durham? I have the fight even going in this round. The fight even. Time. How do you score the fight up to this point, Joe Frazier? Well, I would say the fight's pretty close. You know? Very close. Okay. Nancy Durham and Joe Frazier in agreement as to the closeness of the fight. This round, Ali is doing well. Less than a minute to go. Not my intention to make any excuses for Muhammad Ali as you see the countdown on the clock. One has to wonder, has he gone stale from the constancy of fighting, no matter the caliber of opponent? One has to wonder, is it all suddenly going out of him? Is he now but a relic of the fighter he was? It may be too soon for all of these questions, but certainly today's performance gives one pause to wonder. Round 11, running out, as you can see. Oh. End of round 11, and we'll stay with the fighters. You're looking at Kenny Norton right now. That round is the first round, really, where there was a decisive command by Muhammad Ali. Meanwhile, whispering across me are Joe Frazier and Yancey Durham. This bout means a lot to them. Were Ali to lose a decision in this bout, Joe would almost be assured then of a return bout with Foreman. But you haven't been able to track down Dick Sadler, have you, Yancey? No, I haven't been able to talk with Dick Sadler at the present time. I'm having a meeting with some people in California uh, 
Monday. So I think that uh, we'll get Dick in and sit down and ask him just what he's going to do. Because Joe Frazier wants to fight, he's willing to fight and able. So we're not going to sit and wait for Dick Saddle if he don't want to come in and, and on his obligation with me, forget it. Okay. Nancy Durham, you're looking at a tired Muhammad Ali. Frankly, no one gave Kenny Norton a chance as you look at the two fighters on split screen. But the fight has spoken for itself. The final round, round 12. Joe Frazier just made a good crack. He said, what's Ali going to tell you now? That I, Joe Frazier, took all the fight out of him? Because that's what Ali said after Joe was beaten by George Foreman. if you heard Joe Frazier talking to me there as we passed the minute mark in the final round he says the fight's no surprise to him because of the years he worked with Kenny Norton a reiteration basically of what he had told us earlier round 12 when Ali would want to be scoring heavily and is not able to do so Norton is throwing the leather he is not connecting Ali has the blows blocked but the aggressor remains Kenny Norton there's no way in the world will be able to explain the fact that he's put on this kind of show. No way. He didn't want Norton to last 12 rounds. Now we'll have to see how the scoring goes. Ali is tired. Ali is really tired. He was just laughing at a party last night and joking. Good right fight. Uh, that right hurt Muhammad Ali. That right hurt Ali. He got in there and there's blood in Ali's mouth, too. Norton is all over. Norton is the one with the fight left in him. Countdown for the end of the fight. Ali's mouth is bloody. The left gets in and a good right. He is all over Ali. He is punching him around the ring. One could believe in miracles. Not himself is tired. You just saw him groping for breath against the ropes. But he knows what he's doing here. Maybe there is something in hypnotism. Because it's worked for Kenny Norton today. Be back in a minute for the decision, and let's see. We are in the ring, as you can see. This crowd is going wild. They are sensing a decision in favor of unknown Kenny Norton. Nobody can really believe what they have seen. It is a tired Ali and a hurt Ali. And as you can see, we wait now the decision. There is glee over in Kenny Norton's corner. That doesn't mean he has won the fight. I can't, can't understand what's holding up this decision, frankly. According to the actions of Louis Lake here, one of the promoters, Norton may have won. He just said, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Louis, this is Louis Lakes, one of the promoters of this fight. Do you know anything about the scoring? Is well, I don't know, but it, uh, it appears that on a one, they're going a two-point system maximum here in California. Well, wait, we'll get it right now. Right now, Fred Lewis, the ring announcer, is going to give us the decision. Are they ready? 
All right, Ladies here we and go. gentlemen. Judge, Hal Rickard scores it. Five, Norton, four, Ali. <laughs> Judge, Fred Hayes. I can tell you now. Six, Kenny Norton Ali, has won the decision. Five points, Norton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, referee, Frank Rustich. Seven points, Norton. Five points, Ali. There it is. There it is. One of the greatest upsets again Norton. in boxing history. Muhammad Ali here. Here comes Muhammad Ali to congratulate Kenny Norton. Ali's mouth filled with blood. Yes. What? Muhammad Ali. Yes, get Kenny Norton over here. Muhammad Ali, I am told, suffered a broken jaw in the first round. Muhammad, will you come around here, please? Don't rub it. First of all, Kenny, congratulations. Now, what do you think? Well, I say I was dead wrong, and most dead of wrong. the country was dead okay, wrong. Thank you very you much. did your job, and you did it well. You always wrong. Put my ball. Huh? You always wrong. I'm always wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd Muhammad. like to remind you that we have a Muhammad, wasn't that you want to. Wow. Wow. He can't talk. Muhammad, the camera. Wait, turn, turn Muhammad around. He can't talk. I know. We just, just want him to shake. Kenny, I want him to shake Kenny Norton's hand. Oh, Muhammad Ali cannot talk. Kenny, Kenny, come over here. Kenny, first of all, you were a confident fighter. I think everybody was completely wrong about you. How do you feel that you made your fight? Just the way you said in the pre-fight interview? Uh, more or less, yes, I kept pressing things, making him move, and tying himself out and following his instructions explicitly. And it, and it turned out it worked. It sure did work. What now? What are your people going to ask for now? And what do you want to do now? Well, my, my main, my, my paramount goal is the championship. And I'll do whatever Eddie Futch says. He's my trainer. I have full confidence in Eddie Futch. You know, Joe Frazier was sitting next to me throughout the fight, and he said he wasn't the least bit surprised. He knew how good you were. Well, I, I think he did because we worked together quite a few times. Plus the fact Joe and I are very good friends, so I think it was a little partial. Were you aware hey, of Charlie? the fact... Were you aware of the fact that you broke Ali's jaw in the first round? No, no, I wasn't. Were you aware of the fact that you had hurt him? I know I already went through it once or twice. I wasn't aware of the fact that the jaw had been broken. And did he touch you at all, hurt you at all? Uh, he stumbled with one good right hand, but it was a mistake on my part. I didn't. I meant to roll it more, but I didn't. I just turned my head a little bit, which is a mistake, and I didn't make it again. So, whom would you want to fight next, Foreman or Frazier? It makes me and it didn't no difference. Whatever Eddie says, the Paramount goal is a championship. Well, the Foreman has it. Congratulations and Thank good luck much. to you. you. I, a happy Kenny Norton and an unbelievable fight here today. Muhammad Ali would have talked to you, I'm sure. He couldn't because of the broken jaw. He has a broken jaw. He is a beaten man and he is a broken fighter. And so all of the millions of dollars that loom before him with a Foreman match or a Frazier rematch are suddenly gone. What was once a very great fighter becomes now part of fistic history in all probability. And that's the end of the story here in the San Diego Sports Arena. Muhammad Ali, the loser, on a 12-round decision to unheralded Kenny Norton. And so, goodbye from San Diego. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines doing business in 100